Senator Hernandez. Thank you, Madam President and members. This bill updates California statutes to reflect the new post-Affordable Care Act environment by doing two things. Number one, it reauthorizes the California Health Benefits Review Program, known as CHBRP, and updates their scope of work. And number two, it revises the open enrollment period for the individual market consistent with the federal regulations. This bill will broaden CHBRP's scope of work, so the review will include a look at benefit design, cost sharing, and premiums without additional funding. On open enrollment portion of the bill, the ACA requires the Federal Health and Human Service Secretary to set annual open enrollment periods for health insurance exchanges. Final regs issued in February change the open enrollment dates from 2016 coverage year. This bill updates California statutes in the line with the regs. This is an urgency bill because open enrollment begins in 2015 for the 2016 coverage year and because CHPRP is, ex is to expire in July. With that, members, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Any discussion or debate on SB 125? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, is there any objection to the use of the unanimous roll call? Seeing none, ayes 38, no zero on the urgency. Ayes 38, no zero, the measure passes. File item 25, Senate Bill 14. Senator Lara, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 14 by Senator Lara and act relating to civil actions. Senator Lara. Thank you, Madam President and members. SB 14 would increase protections for child victims of sexual abuse in civil courts by preventing an adult in a position of authority, like a teacher uh, or coach who sexually abuses a child for claiming the child consented as a defense. Additionally, the bill would ensure a victim of child abuse's sexual history cannot be used as evidence against them. Currently in California, differences, different rules apply to sexual abuse cases depending on whether the case is in, is in civil or criminal courts. Recently, a teacher in my district was convicted of criminal, uh, of criminal court of lewd acts against a 14-year-old student and was sentenced to serve time in prison. Following that conviction, the victim's family filed suit against LAUSD, alleging the district had been negligent and that the victim had suffered th serious emotional damage as a result. LAUSD argued that the 14-year-old student had consented to have sex with her teacher and was permitted to use her sexual history as evidence in their defense. This is not an insulated, isolated incident, uh, incident. Other school districts and employers have made similar arguments in civil cases. There's, these differences between civil and penal code are dangerous and threaten to allow sexual predators and indifferent entities off the hook for child abuse and negligence. SB 14 will close these loopholes and ensure the victim's rights are protected. The bill has received bipartisan support. I respectfully ask for your I votes. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on the measure? Seeing none, is there any objection to the use of the previous anonymous roll call? Seeing none, ayes 38, no zero. The measure passed. passes. File item 26, Senate Bill 142, Senator Jackson, pass. File item 27, Senate Bill 414, Senator Jackson. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 414 by Senator Jackson, an act relating to marriage. Senator Jackson. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President and members. SB 414 will modernize statutory language to reflect marriage equality in California by replacing the gendered term husband and wife to the gender neutral spouse throughout 18 code sections. It is important for statutory language to reflect California law in order to accurately protect and represent the rights of the people. Self-represented litigants, who comprise an overwhelming percentage of those, particularly in our family law courts, rely on statutory provisions to understand their rights and their duties under the law. Marriage equality was restored to California when the courts ruled Proposition 8 to be unconstitutional in violation of the Equal Protection Clause, SB 1306 by Senator Lenner, Leno conformed marriage statutes to establish legal precedent and court decisions. California's family code now reflects marriage equality in the state. 
There are other provisions in statutory law, however, particularly in California's probate code, with important applications for married couples and the individual rights of spouses. These provisions need to be updated to reflect marriage equality in California in order to prevent confusion for courts, litigants, and applicants for state programs about what rights are available to same-sex spouses. This measure passed the Judiciary Committee with unanimous bipartisan support and is another important step in the continued effort toward restoring and protecting the rights of same-sex couples in California. And for that reason, I would ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Senator Leno. Thank you, Madam President. I want to thank Senator Jackson for bringing the bill forward, cleaning up the balance of California's code sections to reflect current law. As she mentioned, our bill last year did the same just for the family code, and this will take care of the rest of California's codes. Uh, I just want to remember an incident last year when we took the vote on 1306, uh, one of our Republican colleagues had voted for it, and um, I was pleasantly surprised. I went over to the colleague to say, thank you very much. Uh, can I ask why you voted for the bill? And he said, well, it is the law. And I said, yes, Senator, it is the law. Thank you. As lawmakers, I think it's important that our actions reflect and respect the law. That is all this bill does. Thank you, Senator Jackson. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Senator Jackson, would you like to close? Simply ask for your I vote. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Bates. Bell. Aye. Berryhill. Aye. Block. Aye. Canella. Aye. De Leon. Aye. Fuller. Gaines. Aye. Galjani. Aye. Hall. Hancock, aye. Hernandez, Hernandez, aye. Hall, aye. Hertzberg, aye. Hill, aye. Hueso, aye. Huff, aye. Jackson, aye. Lada, aye. Leno, aye. Leva, aye. Lou, aye. McGuire, aye. Mendoza, aye. Mitchell, aye. Monning, aye. Morlock, aye. Morell, no. Win, I. Nelson, no. Pan, I. Pavley, I. Roth, I. Runner, Stone, I. Vidak, I. Wachowski, I. Wolk, Wolk, I. Please call the absent members. Bates, I. Fuller. Runner. Ayes 35, noes 2, the measure passes. File item number 28, SGR number 1, Senator Bell. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Joint Resolution 1 by Senator Bell relative to Social Security. Senator Bell. Madam President, members, uh, this resolution, Senate Joint Resolution Number One, urges the United States Congress to pass legislation repealing the Social Security Act's windfill elimination provision and government pension offset. In California, these provisions penalize individuals who began their careers in the private sector and then switched to the public sector. When individuals decide to switch careers to become teachers, or public safety officers, it reduces their benefits because the state and local government employer is not coordinated with Social Security. It is critical for the United States government to take action in removing these penalties to ensure our teachers and other public employees are treated fairly under the Social Security system. Uh, this uh, resolution um, and the law is a bipartisan law, and I, requ I request an I vote. Thank you. Discussion and debate, Senator Pavley. Yes, uh, members, this is a really important measure for uh, teachers mm -hmm. and people who are prospective teachers. Many of you perhaps don't realize that uh, teachers, let's say they've had uh, 
two jobs in life. They worked for the private sector for, oh, 15, 20 years and paid into Social Security and then maybe they had children and, co and um, then they become a teacher and lots of times teachers are at their very best if they're uh, change of careers and in their later life they become a teacher and then they find out that um, uh, then they'll teach maybe for 15 or 20 years before they retire and until you look at your retirement you don't realize that by teaching you actually lose most of your social security that you've put into it's under the windfall profits thing it's a real big problem and uh, frankly teachers that are people that are in the private sector and think about becoming teachers, if they do a little homework and they realize they have to give up most of their social security for the privilege and honor of being a classroom <laughs> teacher for 15, 20 years. And at 15 years as a teacher, or 20 years, or anything less than 20, uh, the pensions are very minimal. Mm -hmm. Maybe a thousand a month, right? Most teachers don't get retired health care either. But uh, I feel that this is a real big deterrent in trying to recruit quality teachers because of this federal offset provision on Social Security. And here's the real kicker about it. I thought, oh, I'll take Social Security and my husband's a retired teacher and that'll work out. No, if you're married to someone who's in the uh, teacher retirement system here, you're not eligible for Social Security or it's reduced greatly based on how much retirement they have. So it is a real problem. And as you know, um, teachers particularly, uh, we need all the tools we can get to attract them into the teaching base. And again, I want some of those people willing to make a mid-career change uh, not to be deterred into going to teaching uh, just because of losing all the investment they made in the Social Security system in the private sector. This is a really important bill. This resolution has been sent to Congress numerous times, and um, it's always on their to-do list. They just haven't done it yet. Very important. Thank uh, Senator Bell for bringing this forward. Senator Murlock. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this has been an issue for many decades, in fact, and I, I have to be a little careful because I'm, I would benefit from this if it were approved by Congress uh, because I was in FICA, and now I went to the county and didn't have Social Security withheld. My concern is this, I, if, if our state wants to do this and ask Congress to make a change, why can't we just change the laws here in the state of California? Why don't we take on the financial burden? I'm just curious, I don't have the research, but if someone, or, or, or if someone could provide that for me, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, any further discussion? Uh, Senator Jackson. It's very briefly, you know, we keep talking about the need to, to get good people to go into the teaching profession, and yet Congress singled them out as an example of people who uh, weren't going to be entitled to get Social Security even if they accrued it. And so what is the message that we're sending to people, um, and, and why have we singled out teachers? I've got a number of family members who are teachers, and uh, they go into this in spite of the disincentives that this country has created. We need good teachers all over the United States of America. We need them right here in California. The message should not be, oh, and by the way, you're going to give up Social Security, unlike any other profession. The message should be, we want to encourage you to go into the profession, not just because you love it. And as my former colleague or my predecessor, Jack O'Connell, used to say, he didn't realize that going into teaching meant he had to uh, commit to a life of poverty. If we really want good people to go into the profession, if we want to encourage mid-level career changes, let us encourage the United States to do better with our teachers so that they don't end up having to choose between something they may already have earned and something that they only earn when they come into the teaching profession. With that basis, I want to thank Senators Bell and Pavley. I think this is a discussion we want to have, we need to have, if we truly want to create an atmosphere where our children learn because they have the best teachers possible and encourage those teachers to stay in the profession. I would urge an I vote. Senator Mendoza. I thank you, Madam President. I thank Mr. Bell for bringing this bill forward as a teacher. I taught 10 years straight. Uh, now I'm here as a legislator and I'm paying into Social Security. 
I will be affected by this. I will have to have an offset on my Social Security if I ever get there. And so it's going to directly impact me. And you got to keep this in mind. We're, California is only one of 14 states that do this. Other states don't have this policy. We're only one of 14. So it makes it really unfair. It really, the federal government needs to do something about this. It directly impacts a lot of teachers. And you know what? If some people, if some folks have worked in the private sector, have paid in Social Security, and wants to become a teacher, they will lose whatever they put in there. Or there will be an offset. That's very unfair. So why, you know, we need to make sure we remedy this or we try to encourage the federal government to do something about this and it's long overdue. I urge and I vote. Thank you. Senator Bates. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I rise in op opposition to this. I believe that the real issue here is whether our social security system will remain viable. And if not, uh, teachers wouldn't be able to receive their benefit anyway. This bill impacts the Social Security uh, benefit by $62 billion is the projection, and that is my concern. Uh, Social Security is the only pension plan uh, that folks in the private sector have, and those are our children who are currently paying into it that may not have it uh, when they reach retirement age. So I think it's a very significant issue financially, and on that uh, basis, I must oppose it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, Senator Bell, please close. Yes, um, just responsive to two things. Um, I want everybody to know that uh, this resolution uh, simply asks for uh, repeal. It does not um, uh, specify the legislation, which is now underway in Congress. There's a, there's a bill uh, uh, by uh, Congressman uh, Davis, a Republican from Illinois, with our local um, California Congressman Adam Schiff, and that bill is entitled um, Social Security Fairness Act of 2015. And what they're trying to do is get that bill on the on the committee agenda so they can score score the uh, the Congressional Budget Office can score uh, the impact of the bill, and then start the discussion of the fiscal impacts the the other kinds of impacts. And I think it's very important for California because uh, as pointed out, California is one of 14 states that is affected by this. But as it turns out, the teachers and, and other uh, public safety employees, this affects public safety employees also, are disproportionately paying into Social Security and not getting money back. So California is paying money into Social Security and not getting back. I think that's worthy of discussion on, in, the, in Congress, and uh, I think they're going to score the bill. They don't, you know, we've heard there's all kinds of different numbers, but their bill needs to be scored by the Congressional Budget Office. Let's support this. Let's, let's get this on the table so Congress can, can discuss this and find out how uh, the public employees affected can, can uh, see their Social Security uh, uh, payments that they've made legitimately in their life, return to their families so their families don't get penalized for participating in Social Security. I urge I vote. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Aye. No. Bates? Aye. No. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Aye. Aye. Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? Aye. Aye. De Leon? Aye. Fuller? Aye. Aye. Gaines? Aye. Galjoni? I Hall, Aye. I Hancock, Aye. I Hernandez, Aye. I Hertzberg, Aye. I Hill, Aye. I Hueso, Aye. I Huff, Aye. I Jackson, Aye. I Lada, Aye. I Leno, Aye. I Leva, Aye. I Lou, Aye. I McGuire, Aye. I Mendoza, Aye. I Mitchell, Aye. I Monning, Aye. I Morlock, Aye. No Morell, No Win. I, Nilsson, I, Pan, I, Pavley, I, Roth, I, Runner, Stone, No, Vidak, I, Wachowski, I, Walk, Walk, I. Call the absent members. De Leon, Gaines, I, Runner. Ayes 32, noes 5, the resolution is adopted. 
File item number 29, Senate Bill 222, Senator Block. Pass on file. File item number 30, Senate Resolution number 21, Senator Lara, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Resolution 21 by Senator Lara relative to the Cambodian Genocide Memorial Week. Senator Lara. Thank you, Madam President and members. SR 21 will declare Cambodian Genocide Memorial Week during April 13th and 17th in California and will honor those who have died as well as survivors and their descendants for their courage and contributions to our state and country. The introduction of SR-21 marks an important day, not only for Cambodian Americans, but for all Americans who stand for human, human rights and against injustice. April 13th through 16th is the Cambodian New Year and represents a time for celebration. I respectfully ask for your I vote on SR-21. Thank you, Senator. Any discussion or debate? Is there any objection to the use of... Uh, Senator Nguyen. Thank, thank, thank you, Senator. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Madam Pro Tem. M Madam President, <laughs> sorry, I was in the back. Um, I just want to thank Senator um, Laura for bringing this issue forward. Nations' conflicts rarely remain within their own borders. The genocide in Cambodia was directly related to regional events that affected all Southeast Asian nations greatly in the second half of the 20th century. Trage tragedies in Southeast Asia, particular in the 70s, led to a massive exodus of both Vietnamese and Cambodians. Refugees from both of these nations, myself included, have resettled in large numbers to California. As a result of the genocide of nearly two million people in Cambodia by the communists, Cambodian communities throughout the world have remained remain dedicated to promoting human rights and freedoms. History shows that not protecting these essential human rights leads to appeal, appall, appealing events that, appalling events that can dramatically affect current and future generations. Cambodians have contributed greatly to the success of California and they remain committed to a free and prosperous life for future generations. All Californians should be educated about this grim event that is often forgotten. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, additional discussion or debate? Any objection to the use of a previous unanimous roll call? Seeing none, I 38, no zero. The resolution passes. We're going to return. <laughs> We'd ask that you please refrain from applause uh, in the gallery, please. Returning to privileges of the floor, Senator Lara at Senator De Leon's desk. Senator thank, Lara. Thank you, Madam President. I want to begin by welcoming our guests from uh, Cambodian communities from across California. Chamrip Sul, everyone. Today, I'm proud to be joined by Cambodian Americans to mark the 40th, 40, 40th year anniversary since the tragic event in Cam, uh, Cambodian and human history, the Khmer Rouge seizure of Cambodia and the beginning of what is known as a Cambodian genocide. In one of the bloodiest genocides in the 20th century, nearly two million Cambodians were executed, tortured, starved, and subjugated to inhumane conditions and diseases by Pol Pot's uh, Khmer Rouge between 1975 and 1979. As a result of this horrific reality, approximately 140,000 Cambodian refugees fled their homeland and relocated to the United States. Members, I am honored to represent Cambodia Town, where we just celebrated Cambodian New Year, Sustai Chinam Tamai to everyone, which means Happy New Year. As a California State Senator representing the largest Cambodian population in the United States in the great city of Long Beach, I am proud to author Senate Resolution 21. In contrast, April 17th is a time for somber reflection. It has been long overdue to properly memorialize the Cambodian genocide in the California State Legislature. The resiliency, the perseverance of the Cambodian community overcoming this tragic history should be recognized and admired. This resolution is about solidarity, about remembrance, and of course, about healing. 
Therefore, SCR to SR21 calls upon all Californians to observe the week by participating in appropriate activities and programs such as Cambodian Genocide Remembrance Day in, uh, that I am hosting in Long Beach where art and music will be used to reflect, heal, and celebrate the awareness of the Cambodian Genocide. I welcome, I'm, I welcome all members to join me in a reception at 11.30 in room 211 upon adjournment to celebrate um, the contributions of Cambodian Americans and especially our thriving Cambodian community here in California. Thank you, members. Thank you, Senator Lara. I would like to welcome all of our guests in the galleries and all of the photos you've brought to uh, remind us of loved ones lost. Thank you very much for joining us today. Assembly third reading, file item number 33, ACR 25. Senator Liu, Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly concurrent resolution 25 by Assembly Member Obernolte. Senator Liu. Thank you, Madam President and some members. I ask for your I vote on ACR 25. This measure proclaims March 14th, 2915. What is that? As Pi Day, <laughs> the only time this century when the date and time align with the first 10 digits of the numerical Pi. Pi is the Greek letter for the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. This number has been a constant in science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM curriculum taught in our schools. This resolution declared Pi Day to help encourage interest in the STEM disciplines and in careers that need these skills. A May 2014 report by the Superintendent of Public Instruction and concluded that informal learning opportunities, coupled with a broad array of public and private sector partnerships, can encourage more participation in STEM fields, and I ask for your I vote. Is there any discussion and debate? Any objection to the use of a previous unanimous roll call? Bless you. See none, ayes 38, no zero. The resolution is adopted. File item 33, 34, excuse me, ACR 27. No floor jockey. File item 36, ACR 31, Senator Galgiani, not at her desk. File item 37, ACR 43, Senator Fuller, Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly concurrent resolution 43 by Assemblymember O'Donnell relative to California Aerospace Week. 